You can download the art seen in the video for free, link in the description. For grid-based AI pathfinding in Godot, add a character body 2D node, right-click it, hit rename, and change it to grid-based AI. Add a sprite 2D node, set the texture to the art that you can download for free, link in the description. Change the texture filter to nearest, as we are using pixel art. Enable region and edit it. Scroll in with the mouse wheel, select the enemy character, and hit close. We'll then add an offset of negative 6 on the y-axis, so that the feet are centered, and that way the feet appear in the middle of the tiles. Add a sprite 2D as a child of the sprite 2D. Rename it to shadow, add the art atlas from before. Enable region once again and hit edit region. Change it to the shadow of the enemy. We'll then change the position of the shadow to negative 5 on the y axis and go to visibility and hit show behind parent. Next, we will add a collision shape 2D, make it a rectangle, and change its size to 8 by 8. This collision shape doesn't matter for this tutorial as we won't require it for the AI. However, for your game, you may need it to detect when the AI collides with the player and other objects. You may need to keep it enabled. Save the scene. Select the grid based AI and add a script. We will first add two constants. Tile size is equal to the pixel size of each tile in our game. Turns to move is the max amount of moves that the player must make for this AI to do a move. We make these constants as there will be no scenario where we change their values during runtime. Next, we add three export variables. Tile map layer node is used to grab the tile map with all the walls and collisions in our game. Layer node grabs the player, and visual path line 2D will be used to grab a line 2D that we can use to visualize the path the AI wants to take. You don't need to add this, however, it could be good to have in the case of debugging any errors with the AI. We make these export variables because they ignore the scene tree hierarchy, meaning that we can set the appropriate node, then reparent that node and not have to worry about resetting that node in the variable again. Finally, we add three variables. Pathfinder grid will be used as it contains the algorithm for the pathfinding, which is the A-star pathfinding algorithm. Path to player will store all the different positions of the tiles that the AI will take to get to the player. Turn counter will record what turn the player is on, so that in combination with the turns to move constant, the AI will only move every two moves that the player takes. Inside the built-in ready function, we will first offset the debug line 2D by half a tile, so that the line follows the middle of the tile instead of the top left. Next, we establish the settings for the pathfinding grid. We set the region to the tile maps rect. This this means that the AI will only take into account all the tiles that are from the top leftmost tile to the bottom rightmost tile in the tile map. We then set the size of the tile. Next, we establish the diagonal mode of the pathfinding. You can set this to many different options. Diagonal mode always, which will consider a diagonal movement if it is faster. Diagonal mode never, which will never make a diagonal movement. Diagonal mode at least one walkable, which will only allow diagonal movement as long as one side tile isn't blocked. Diagonal mode only if no obstacles, which will allow diagonal movement unless there are blocks that are next to the tile where the diagonal movement would occur. For this video, I will use diagonal mode never. Finally, we call the update function, which simply applies the changed settings for the pathfinding grid. Next, we grab all the cells in the tile map that are collidable, and we add that to the pathfinding grid. This is important, as the information will tell the pathfinding grid what to avoid. You can also change the true to a false if the cell that you are detecting doesn't have collision. I choose to set everything to true, as I have a separate tile map for my walls, and a separate tile map for my floors. Next, we create a custom function called move AI, and we call it in the ready function. This function will handle all the movement and calculation of the designed path to the player. We use this line to calculate the most optimal path to the player. We use get point path to return an array that is ordered from the starting position to the end position. We then write our global position as the starting point and the player node's global position as the end position. We also make sure to divide these both by tile size. This is because this function considers one by one pixel as the same as our tile size by tile size. So therefore we are passing the grid position of the AI and the player. Next we add this design path to the line 2D for debugging purposes. To have the AI move along this path, we first check if the turn counter is not equal to the turns to move constant. If so, we add 1 to the turn counter. Then we use else as it means that enough turns have passed to make a move. First, we check if the size of the path to player array is more than 1. This is because we require there to be a position that we can move to in the array to initiate a move. And we check for 1, opposed to just checking if it's not equal to 0, because the first value that the path to player array will provide is always the starting position of the AI, making us require at least two total positions in the array before considering a move. Next, we remove the first value of the array. This is because the first value is the AI starting position, and not the next tile that we want to move to. Then, we create a variable that will establish the design tile. This is equal to the new first value of the array, plus half of the tile size. We add the half of a tile because the positions inside of the path to player array are always set up to be the top left of the tile. We add half of a tile for the sake of placing the player into the center of the tile instead. Next, we can add all the animation for the AI. 
AI. For me, this includes setting the flip H value appropriately based on the horizontal direction that the AI is going. Then we set the AI's global position to the go to pause variable from before. Because this AI has moved, we update the debug line 2D so that it isn't a tile behind. Then we reset the turn counter so that the AI has to wait a few turns before making another move. To activate the move AI function, we require the player scene. Go to 2D and create a new scene. Add a character body 2D as the root node. Right click it, hit rename and change it to player. Go to the grid based AI, select the sprite 2D and the collision shape 2D by holding down control or shift. Right click and select copy. Then go back, right click and select paste. Select the sprite 2D, go to region, edit region and change it to the player sprite. Go to region, hit edit region and change the shadow to the player's shadow. Save the scene, go to the player and hit add a script. We have a constant for the tile size so that we know how many pixels to move. We then add in the built-in process function. Next, I add basic controls for the player. These include moving in all directions and changing the player's global position based on that direction. I also add any necessary animation. For me, I add flip H for moving left and right. Now to communicate to the enemies that we have made a move, I'll add a custom signal and call it player did a move. I will then emit it from each direction of the movement. Go back to the AI script and in the ready function, I will connect the custom signal from the player node to the move AI function. This this simply means that whenever the signal is emitted, then the script will activate the move AI function. Finally, to apply this AI properly into your game scene, add the player node, reposition them, then add the AI node and reposition them as well. Then assign the export variables to the tile map, the player node. And if you decided to have the debug line 2D, go to game, hit plus, add a line 2D to the scene, then select the grid based AI and connect it to the line 2D. You can also edit the size of the line 2D by changing the width and change its color as well.